What's going on YouTube? I'm Slick, that's Slick Jackson, and if you're looking for the coolest, grooviest content on the side, well, you've come to the right place. Uh, I've been seeing this comic going around on Twitter. People have been taking a real lack into really bashing on it. One of the many differences between me and my husband. Oh look, the last rap peach. I'll save it for the kids. They love peaches so much. Oh look, the last rap peach. I'll use it as a special treat in my daily smoothie. And that is obviously her husband. And you know, people kind of made fun of this comic because it's weirdly judgmental, kind of passive aggressive towards her own husband and goes out of its way to make him look bad. It's like she's saying, yeah, I'm such a great and selfless person. I'm saving a peach for my kids. Unlike my husband, who's only thinking about himself. And you'd think it would be a problem that would be solved with a bit of communication, right? Oh, hey, don't have that peach. I'm saving it for the kids. Well, there, now you don't gotta worry about it. Well, I saw it making the rounds on Twitter, but I also saw a few other posts that came from this comic, and I kinda wondered where all this was coming from. Turns out it's from an Instagram page called Mom Life Comics. I've looked through the page and I'll say right now, it really ain't as bad as people make it out to be. It's a generic cartoon page obviously meant for, you know, middle-aged moms or whatever. It's Facebook type boomer humor. To its credit, there's actually one comic that I thought was pretty funny. My daughter, Five, recently started saying a new word when she's frustrated. Bam it! If this word seems very similar to damn it, that's because it is. She's clearly repeating a misheard curse word. I never say damn it, it's not in my rotation. It is, however, something my husband says, so we know who to blame for this new issue. Damn it! We decided to ignore it when she says it and try not to laugh in hopes that she'll eventually stop saying it. The other night at dinner, our son, too, hit the table with his spoon angrily and yelled, Bam it. I looked at my husband in horror. It sounded way too much like damn it, and you do not want your baby to say damn it. My husband looked directly at my son and said, Diddy, it's not bam it, it's damn it. Needless to say, I was appalled. Bam. Why would you ever say that? What? If he's gonna say it, he might as well say the right word. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll give you that one. That, that was good. That gave me a chuckle. Now, I was going through the posts and something I found out real quick was there's a lot of talk about breastfeeding on here, which I guess makes sense considering it's supposed to be relatable for moms. I mean, I find it pretty weird, but then again, I'm not exactly the target audience here. Found this comic pretty funny though. Me and my mom friends talking about our post breastfeeding boobs. They're so deflated and empty feelings, they just hang there like little triangles. They're like pancakes or pitas, but pitas without any air in them, those super flat ones. Is this something that women, like, do? They sit around and talk about their breasts? I, I mean, don't get me wrong, I love me a good pair of honkers, but I can't say I've ever had an entire conversation devoted to them. I don't know, then again, I'm not the target demographic here, so obviously there's something here that I just ain't getting. But then I found some just really odd comics. I, like, I'm trying to come at this comic with the understanding that it's supposed to appeal to moms and all, so it's obviously gonna poke and prod at the way husbands and children act. Be relatable, be funny, I get it. But some of these are just downright hateful. Like you saw the Peach comic, right? But it gets weirder than that. Things children are sure to ruin. Dinner out, meals in general, white couches, vacations, quotation mark, a good night's sleep, anything about what you'll say this will be fun, their parents' bodies. I don't know, on one hand, I can see this as being a kind of light-hearted, relatable kind of thing. On the other hand, it feels like totally hateful. Like, damn, those kids, they're ruining my vacation, they're ruining my dinners, god damn it, they're ruining my entire life. Appearance-based injustices of motherhood. Attribute, my child, me, you got a little graph here, eyelashes, natural color and texture. Uh, skin. But what really makes this one weird is the description, right? People pay lots of money for blonde highlights, thick eyelashes, perfect beach waves, and smooth bright skin that my children have naturally. Clearly I'm not better about the way in which pregnancy and breastfeeding have literally stolen my youth and given it to them. I don't know, maybe I'm just a humorless little fink, but you're probably middle aged. Most people lose their youth at that point in time. I mean, I don't know, I'd expect my children, who are only a few years out of the womb, to look younger than myself. What a weird description. Bitter at your own kids. Eh, don't look too far into it, Slick. It's just a joke. It's just a joke. 4 p.m. me. Maybe I won't have any wine tonight. 5 p.m. me. Mommy, wham, and she's pouring one. So the joke's that you're an alcoholic. Far be it from me to question parental methods. After all, I ain't a father. But raising a kid on a glass of wine don't seem right to me. 
Man, who am I kidding? I ain't the fun police. Drink all the goddamn wine you want. I mean, hell, I'm a borderline alcoholic anyways. What's the matter what I gotta say? Me at the beginning of December. I've decided to opt out of the holiday craziness this year. I refuse to get swept up in it. I wanna reconnect with what really matters. Time with loved ones, being present, and giving back. We'll make donations instead of giving each other gifts. We won't send out holiday cards. And one gift per kid is plenty. And to be fair, she does kind of redeem herself, if you can really say that, in the next panel. But I mean, what? One gift per kids? How much kids you got? Two or three, right? Good lord. I grew up in the projects with a family bigger than the goddamn Habsburgs. We got ourselves, well, more than one gift per child. By the way, what's the deal with that? Like Santa's w supposedly watching these kids every year like, okay, big brother. Taking a page from 1984, why don't you? But for some reason, kids only act nice in December. Like, nuh-uh, buddy. You gotta be nice all year round. Otherwise, you're getting cold, you little shit. Oh, jeez. I went off on a rant about Christmas. In August. What am I doing? All I'm saying is, if you're only gonna get your kids one gift for Christmas, it better be a damn good gift. Better get them that PS5 or that new Nintendo game. A bunch of these comics are basically about how her children always bother her instead of her husband. You know, as if they wouldn't be more attached to the person who's probably more involved in their life. And for how much she, well, let's say, satirizes her own children, her husband really gets the brunt of it. Obviously, you saw the Peach comic, but there's so much more. Timeline for trying to go anywhere fun with young kids. 90 minutes prior to departure, mom starts process of getting kids dressed and ready. Dad is pooping. Mom gets self-dressed and ready. 60 minutes, mom packs bag of supplies and snacks. Dad is pooping. 30 minutes prior to departure, mom starts yelling and or threatening to cancel trip. Dad starts getting self-ready. Mom tells everyone to go to the bathroom. Desire departure time. Someone has to poop. Often dad again. So, your husband spends like an hour pooping. I don't know, maybe it's time to see a doctor. Maybe think about taking a laxative, taking a closer look at what he eats. Like seriously, what is going on in that bathroom? I don't know, this, this woman's always complaining about going to places. It's like, well, why do you even bother traveling if it, it ain't fun? It's like, I know someone who plays War Thunder tells me how he hates playing it. It's like, well, why do you keep playing it then? Ain't no one has fun, so what's the point? I, I don't know. Bringing groceries in from the car. Uh, my husband only carrying one bag, obviously, and me carrying all the bags, apparently. Now, this is something that I just straight up refuse to believe. At best, you are lying about your own husband. For shame, for shame, I've yet to meet a single person, especially a man, who only takes one bag at a time. Like, I need you to think about whether or not you're willing to accuse your husband of such a misdeed. As we all know, the crime of making more than one trip for grocery bags is punishable by summary execution. Or, at least it should be. Oh god, look at all this text. Am I reading a book or a comic? Me trying to explain our household dynamic in terms my husband understands. On most sports teams, we have a superstar or a playmaker who makes things happen. That's me. Alright. Not egotistical at all. Then you have that person who just stands around waiting for other people to make plays or shoot the ball. That's you. We need you to step up so we can win as a team. I now understand why domestic abuse is so common. Alright, I am not. I cannot make that joke. God, if this was my wife, oh boy. Alright, well, again, I probably shouldn't make that joke after making a joke about abuse. What I'm saying here is, I'd be really mad. You have the audacity to call this guy out for standing around waiting for other people to make plays. This man probably has a job. He's bringing home the bacon and you're saying he's just standing around. You know, I'm sure he'd love to be a yoga instructor like you while his significant other goes down to the warehouse to push pallets for 12 hours a day. Scenario, husband walks into the room wearing my winter hat. My reaction two years into the relationship, Oh, my hat looks so cute on you and how sweet that you want to wear it. My reaction 17 years into our relationship, Why are you wearing my hat again? Please stop, it's my hair. I've asked you not to wear it a million times. You never put it back where it goes and you sweat in it and make it smell. <laughs> Jesus, imagine getting mad over someone wearing your freaking hair. How much those things cost? Five dollars, right? Straight out of the sweatshop. Surely you can just get a new damn hat. I don't know, maybe it's just cause I'm not married, but it's a winter hat. At this point, you're just looking for things to get angry about. No wonder you're so stressed all the time. You put it on yourself. Oh my god, more text. On Mother's Day, I was home until 3 p.m. Then 3 to 8 p.m. I went to a get-together with a bunch of mom friends. During the time I was gone, my husband took the kids to a family gathering with his mom and aunt where they ate dinner. Then he bought the kids home and put them to bed. Here's the conversation we had the next day. I am exhausted. Yesterday really took it out of me. I think I need to call my mom and apologize for being such a zombie when we were together. I just checked out and let them deal with the kids because I was so tired. Hmm. The days when I'm with the kids all day are just so hard. Yeah, I know. It's like I need a full day off just to recover from yesterday. 
Don't say it, don't say it, don't say it, don't say it. Well, uh, yeah, I do that almost every day by myself, and I agree, it's really hard. That's what I'm always trying to tell you. I mean, why do you think I have a comic account focused solely on how exhausting and hard this is? With almost 200,000 followers who feel the same way. Why are you flexing your Instagram account uh, on your husband? Why did I make Tired Mom Social Club apparel? Because you wanted money. I mean, way to advertise your brand, I guess. Not exactly subtle, but I don't know. Does this help you understand why I'm so tired every day? Because it's really hard. It's so hard. Even in this person's like own comics, she's completely unlikable. I mean, the guy's just talking about how he gets tired with dealing with the kids, which is totally understandable, and this woman just freaks out for no reason. I don't know, I never feel this way at work. Like, when a new hire's all like, oh, ah, uh, this job's real hard, man. I'm not like, oh, well, how do you think I feel? Like, I don't get it. Well, I'd hope you have more stamina than I do since you do it every day. I feel like that's a pretty good response, showing a degree of appreciation and whatnot. And really, what are you really supposed to say to an angry woman anyways? Then she turns into a dragon and burns him to a crisp. Apparently she makes these comics to vent, I don't know, I feel like there are better ways to do that than making comics about murdering your own husband. By the way, every time my husband spends large chunks of solo time with the kids, he tells me how much he appreciates me, I just have a hard time when he mansplains how exhausting it is to me and acts like it's something I don't already already know. So he's telling you that he appreciates your work and you call that mansplaining? God. Seriously, like, <laughs> you have to try to be this unlikable cheese. We're sitting down to eat breakfast, my husband is still in the kitchen. I say, will you grab a bib for Teddy? He says, where are the bibs? What I want to say in response, they're in the same place they've been for five years. In the same place I put them every time I wash them and put them away. Presumably the same place you've gotten them from a thousand times before. Unless of course you've gotten either one of our kids a bib in the past five years. Lady, with all due respect, he asked a question, didn't know where something was, so he asked. That's a crime now, apparently. Is it so wrong that in the hectic life of a parent who works a job and deals with the kids, he forgets where things are kept every now and then? I mean, come on. Jeez, even the response is passive-aggressive. What I actually say in response, in the corner cabinet, the same place they've always been. And that, my friends, is called self-control. Yeah, about as much self-control as a ticking time bomb. Get a load of some of these comics. Why shouldn't you lash out about that? Willful incompetence should absolutely be lashed out against. Raise the bar. Imagine encouraging people to literally lash out at their husbands. Like, willful incompetence. Well, you must really love your partner if you think that's what's going on, if you think he's doing it on purpose to annoy you. I don't get it. That is called weaponized incompetence. It's deliberate. Uh, like, what's going on? You think this guy's waging, like, some sort of psychological warfare against his wife or something? Yeah, psyop in your own wife. It's called the Sigma Grind set, you know? You know, it seems like there's a lot of these comics where this woman complains that her husband just ain't pulling his weight. But then she contradicts herself, like, constantly. There'll be these comics where she complains that he's lazy and all. And then you read some of these descriptions and she's like, oh no, he does a lot of work around the house. He washes the dishes, makes lunches, and it's like, why are you making these comics single in mind. Like, I'd understand it a little more if she was making fun of husbands in general, being a relatable webcomic for moms and all, but you're singling out your own husband for being lazy when he seems like a real stand-up guy who pulls his weight. I mean, just get a load of this post. Before I go any further into my own experience with this frustrating subject, I should say that this post is not a critique of Ben at all. Ben is an amazing father and husband. He carries quite a man of load himself and does a lot around our house. He cooks all of our dinners, does almost all of our grocery shopping, he pays all of our bills and maintains our yard. He does his own laundry laundry, three nights per week he comes home from work and immediately handles all evening Charlie May duties while I head out to teach yoga. Of course I go on to say a lot about what Ben doesn't do around the house, but the point that I was trying to make in this post is that it's not Ben's fault our society of patriarchy has taught him all the extra things I handle around the house are just things that women do and thus he don't have to worry about them. I genuinely have no idea what she's saying here, bringing up the patriarchy? I thought we left that talking point back in 2016. I mean I don't know, I think we got- I think women have a good degree of representation these days. I mean, there's that Nancy Pelosi chick. Uh, she seems like a good representation for all women. Like, according to your own words, this guy is pulling more than his share of work. Like, what does this man have to do in order for you to be happy? He has a job, he gets your food, he makes your food, pays the bills, looks after the children while you do your job, which is yoga. This guy seems like a great person. So why are you making these comics just belittling him? And from what I've heard, this guy has two jobs. A lawyer and a business owner. Which, don't quote me on that, because I'm not sure if it's true. But still, this guy, obviously, has a lot on his 
plate. Now, I guess people left a lot of comments on her page kind of questioning this comic of hers because she felt the need to explain a few things in a few comics. Sometimes I just want to connect with thousands of strangers on the internet about how hard this wonderful thing called life is, you know? And guess what? You can be fiercely in love with your job, your home, your children, your partner, and still need to vent about the challenges of being an adult, a partner, and a parent. And you know, I just kind of find it weird that you feel the need to vent about your own husband on the internet to a bunch of strangers. Like, I gotta know, far be it for me to question the stability of your relationship, or your mental state for that matter, but for God's sake, if you don't like something about your husband, why vent to it to a bunch of internet strangers? I thought relationships were built upon the bedrock of communication. And I find it funny how this person talks about the need for venting, because I remember in that one comic, the husband talks about how hard parenting is, and you get mad at him for it. An important message for the woman who have recently left these kinds of comments on my posts. I don't have kids, and I want them, but reading these comics makes me think it's too hard. I'm not a mom yet, but this page genuinely makes me scared of motherhood. The comics make me think that womanhood ain't worth it. Which, considering how hostile a lot of these comics are, I'm not gonna lie, I think it's totally reasonable for people to say stuff like this. Like you've seen just a few of these comics, it's basically her complaining, right? And I get it, parenting is hard, but it really does cross the line from, you know, humor to just, like, complaining. Obviously, whether or not you have kids is a very personal decision, but I want you to know the following as you read my comics and scroll through my feed. Number one, no matter how exhausting it is, my kids are the very best thing that happened to me. I don't say it over and over again in my posts because the majority of my readers are moms and it goes without saying. Well, it obviously does go with saying because, well, you've read these comics along with me, and it's not exactly too hard to walk away thinking that this person absolutely hates the hand that she's been dealt. Yes, being a mom is hard, but just because something is hard don't mean it isn't amazing, rewarding, or inspiring and soul filling. It is all the above and more. Number two, my husband is the love of my life and I adore him. We've been together for 17 years and guess what? Marriage is hard too. It's been way harder since we've had kids for many reasons, primarily our work schedules, but he is amazing and he grounds me and challenges me and yes, pisses me off too. Yeah, I can, I can see that. Again, it, just because it's hard don't mean it ain't worth it. Also, FYI, my husband is fully supportive of every comic I put up about him or otherwise because he gets it. And I want to believe her, but on the other hand, these comics cross a line. It crosses the line from just poking some fun at your husband to legitimately hating the guy. Like, these comics are passive-aggressive, sometimes just full-on aggressive if I'm being completely honest. Like, if I had a wife and I found out she was making these comics about me, I'd feel hurt to tell you the truth. Like, I could put up with trolls threatening to dox me, people leaving mean comments, can't forget the Twitter ratios either. But those are just randies online. We're talking about my own wife here. I'd feel hurt damn hurt. Like, I'd question whether or not this person actually loves me. If that really is the truth, if your husband really is supportive of this kind of stuff, fine. It ain't my place to question it. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that, to me, motherhood and marriage is, is a lot more worth all the frustrations that I make comics about. I wouldn't be able to joke about it if I didn't love my family and my role as a mother as much as I do. Well, again, they don't feel like jokes. That's the thing. They come off as incredibly well, not incredibly, just somewhat hateful. This was made when the comic began trending on Twitter. When a woman says something, when a woman says anything on the internet. All I'll say is, wow, you make judgmental comics and you get judged for it. Who knew? I don't know why she brings up the woman because, I mean, everyone gets crap. I do feel a twinge of pity because this is probably just some boomer who makes comics on her off time and she's getting hate for it. I mean, yeah, the comics are bad, but not as bad as most of the stuff I talk about on the channel. There's some comics about guns too and I just don't get them. How is this less regulated than this? And I see this point parroted all the time. Oh, guns are less regulated than women. In this case, guns are less regulated than uteruses. Apparently, you need to be 18 to own a uterus. You also need a special permit to conceal carry a uterus. You're not allowed to brandish your uterus. Well, okay, that one actually makes sense. There are uterus-free zones. Some cities, you're not even allowed to have a uterus at all. Like, I genuinely don't understand this argument. Uh, first of all, screw you. Second of all, why do people make this argument? It's genuinely stupid. And then there are some ones that just kind of feel preachy. Short list of thanks for which moms are judged. Child's clothing is dirty, unseasonal, and or ill-fitting. Child has bad manners or misbehaves, household mess, unfolded laundry, dirty bathrooms, etc., working too much, not working outside the home. I've never heard anyone berate a mother for not working outside of the home. I don't know. Unhealthy lunch or snacks packed for school, amount of screen time, hiring a cleaner or someone to do the laundry, cooking, etc., sending kids to daycare or hiring a nanny. Again, never heard of that one before. Child's hair is unkempt or unbrushed, state of child's fingernails, 
getting takeout for dinner too often. I'd say these are more like complaints from other like women, other moms, you know, than, you know, society as a whole. Short list of things before which dads are judged, not providing for family, leaving family. So the person who is overly judgmental towards her husband is now saying that dads aren't judged for nothing. All right. An illustrated guide to the double standards of parenting. Fun dad, lazy mom. Present dad, inattentive mom. Involved dad, working mom. Just such a good dad, run of the mill mom. And I think what this comic don't realize is, the reason this is, is because moms are typically the ones who like raise the child, right? They're the ones who kind of mold and sculpt them, so to speak. Uh, generally speaking, it is the job of the mother to keep their children clean, keep the house all right, that kind of stuff. While the mother stays home and is thus expected to keep the house all good and stuff, the father's out working, doing Doing the labor, making sure that the bills get paid and whatnot. You see a father doing this stuff, it means he's taking the time out of his busy work life to spend time with the kids. He's making that extra effort, right? Like it or not, that's just how it is. Well, most of the time anyways, ever since we gave women rights, man, I don't know what's going on with these families. Welcome to my Instagram account, one that is for moms by a mom, and in support of moms, here's what I believe about motherhood. That moms and all women are overworked, undervalued, underappreciated, and underpaid. Underpaid. So, moms should be paid now? I thought being a part of being a parent was that you unconditionally loved your child. I guess there are conditions now. Uh, who's gonna give this money? Like what, are you gonna take it out of the taxpayer's dime? That moms and all women need more help, both from our society and in many cases from our partners and or families. That during this pandemic and at all times, moms are essential workers. Uh, who's saying otherwise? Like when COVID was going around, did I miss the part where the government said, all right, you gotta stop doing your jobs now, gotta contain the spread of COVID, and that includes the parents. And I feel like people are gonna say, well, Slick, more women are working now, so it's harder to look after them kids. Well, shoot, if you wanted more time to look after the little ones maybe you should have stopped at voting rights but no you wanted all the manly jobs so now you got them if you don't like it you can take it to the generation that came before or maybe it's the one that came before that one i don't know in any case you guys are the ones who wanted the rights you know we ain't had nothing to do with that in any case that is mom's life comics weird little thing i'd say it's mostly just kind of boomer humor stuff kind of like what you'd find on facebook but i'd also say there's a weirdly large portion of you know comics that it's just devoted to taking a dump on husbands you know like, it just crosses the line of being, you know, a little good bit of dumb fun to, it's just weird, you know, makes you feel uncomfortable. I don't know, I'm done, I've had my laughs, and I want to go to bed. So, this is Slick Jackson, do me a favor, keep it groovy, thank you, thank you very much.